get going once you well I, oh it's not even five yet <laughs> i guess i can't start yet <laughs> Okay, Donna, so you are now live. I have okay, made thank you. Host as well. Okay. Thank you. So, Nancy, your co host. Hi, Linda. Hello. Good afternoon. Hi. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. How are you, Dana? Nice to see you. Good. Nice to see you, too. Welcome. Thank you. I enjoy your classes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, me, too. I love your classes. Oh, thank you, Linda. Me, too. Well, it's good to see everyone coming in tonight, or I should say this afternoon. Actually, it is nighttime for some people. <laughs> yeah, it is nighttime. <laughs> and so uh, while we're waiting for people to come in now, um, how many people have been to the Vatican? Have they been on the tours? I have in a long time ago. Yeah. And what do you remember about it? It was beautiful. That's it. <laughs> it was beautiful. Huh? I was there also. Um, I was very impressed um, as far as the art that is in one area, one place. Right. Are you talking in general in the Vatican in general? Yes, or, in yeah. general. Yes, in general. Yeah. Yeah, they have quite a collection there. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have any uh, memories of going to the Vatican that you want to share? I just remember it. Well, it was the long walk. I mean, it's quite a, when you go there, it's a, you're there for many hours. <laughs> I I was uh -huh. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Somebody was talking. It's no. all right. Go ahead. I remember I went there with my husband, our uh -huh. first time. And uh, we went, we were in the 16th chapel. And uh, I remember the guards, the very strict about not talking oh yeah everybody was we i felt like a cow a whole bunch of people you know <laughs> inside the room, my, the, the room you know the seat clean beautiful and then the guards were saying do not speak do not speak <laughs> I don't read. That's funny. I, don't, I went probably 10 years ago and I don't remember the guards doing that, but you now maybe they were. <laughs> yes. And I don't know if you saw the movie Netflix, uh, the, the Pope with, uh, it has a very good actor. He's won several uh, Oscars. Uh -huh. uh, he was in the same room. He was playing uh, a, the German Pope. Oh my gosh. Benedicto. You mm -hmm. know? Benedict. And uh, in the same room with Pope Francis, who was going to be Pope Francis. And it was nothing like that. And I'm like, wow, I was in that room. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, Different experience. It. Yeah, it is. No, but I, I really like it. And I, what I also remember is the people, the way they were dressed. Uh -huh. uh, people were, uh, uh, there was a little bit of everything. People that were very conservative and co they were supposed to cover their shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, you know it you know the way there you have to be respectful it's a it's a holy place you know right it's, exactly yeah and and i was wondering my gosh why can't we do that in the u.s why can't we be more uh 
concern of the way we go to church and we go to, you know, places like that. So I don't right. know. Yeah. My yeah. Personal. It's huh? that's true. They're yeah. They are strict about things like that. Uh, so <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we get started here? Uh, there might be some people wandering in. Want to welcome everyone to Get Set Up. We're seniors teaching seniors about technology, and we have programs, of course, just like this one here, here tonight. Today's class, we're going to talk about the famous art of the Vatican. My name is Donna. I'm your guide today. I was in the IT industry for 30 years. I like helping people overcome their fears of technology. And uh, this session is being recorded. If you wish to have a copy of the recording, you can do so by emailing help at getsetup.io. And uh, we are live streaming, so hello to people out there. Come on in and register so we can uh, see your faces and learn your names. <laughs> and we're not getting paid to uh, promote the Vatican at all tonight. This is just for our own enjoyment. So we're gonna learn about some of the most famous artworks that are in the Vatican. We're going to discuss the works of Michelangelo and Raphael. And we're also going to find out what famous artwork was stolen and then returned. Does anybody know? <laughs> the mystery. Oh. <laughs> All right. I just asked you a little earlier uh, if anyone else wants to mention anything about their tour. We may, I may spark some memories too as we go. If anyone wants to, you can go ahead and let us know. So when we're talking about the history of the Vatican Museums here, uh, you know, the popes uh, had this history of saving artwork. <laughs> this is kind of how it started. I'm going to show you some um, pictures of, from the Vatican here, uh, just to show you a little slide here, some of the grounds. This is that acorn statue. It's in the courtyard. Some other pictures. These are very old buildings here at the Vatican. People remember this stairway? I think it's right after you get the ticket. This is the famous spiral stairway that you walk down. Another uh, sculpture outside. This is the Hall of Maps. Uh, I, this one really struck me. Um, this is probably one of the halls. You know, you walk down a lot of different halls when you're taking the tour. And this one really, for some reason, stuck in my mind because they have all these beautiful, uh, very ancient uh, maps on, uh, on the wall here. And just the contrast of the darkness, the blues on the, the wall and the gold on top. It's just, it was really pretty. Does anybody remember that, Paul? Yes, I remember it. Yeah, and yeah, and I, you're right. It, like you say, the sides were dark, -er, but up on the ceiling was magnificent. I, I wanted to mostly keep my head up while I was walking, just so yes. I could look at the art. Yes, it was just magnificent um, that one. And then the, here is um, Leo Calhoun and his sons. Now, this is, this is the statue that started, really, the Vatican Museums. This statue in 1506 was discovered by Pope Julius II laying around in a vineyard. <laughs> it was just out there in the field, and he just thought it was a shame that art from, you know, the Roman art was just being discarded like this, you know, out in the fields. So he picked it up. Well, I, I'm sure he didn't pick it up himself. He probably had people do it. <laughs> but he brought it back to the Vatican. And this was the beginning of the popes preserving some of the artwork of the Roman history. And so this is the one that started this. Uh, this uh, is in the courtyard outside it's kind of on the outside wall it's a marble statue you will see the um you know Le um Leocon and his sons with they're fighting off a serpent here very dramatic um statue here but this was the beginning of the collecting of art and as you know as someone else noted it's quite a a, a big collection you know right now um, the Vatican has about 70,000 works of art. They only can display about 20,000 at a time. So they rotate it around. There's 54 galleries. 
So it really is a really magnificent museum. If you get a chance to uh, check it out when you're in Rome, definitely it's, wor it's worth the, the day spent there. So this was where it all started. I'm gonna show you a few more pictures here. Some of the grounds around the museums. Here's another, so many hallways like this with just magnificent statues and, and the ceilings were just unbelievable. Uh, as you walk through these type of hallways, just all the marble. Here's a the shot of a ceiling. Is Isn't the marble gorgeous on that one? Yes, it is. I mean, it's just breathtaking. Um, and, you know, this is just really walking down one of the halls. <laughs> and the ceilings, the artwork in the ceilings, they really had the greatest artists at that time were working. You know, they were contractors, basically. <laughs> And they were in here painting, you know, helping with all the, the restoration. The Pope that you can, um, Pope Julius II, he really was, you know, he was um, pontiff between 1503 and 1513. And he was responsible for collecting a lot of the artwork in, in the definitely the, the beginning of the museum, the, the uh, older section. Um, he definitely, and he was the one who commissioned the work for the Sistine Chapel and the Raphael rooms. He's the one that uh, got all that, the artist in there to uh, work on it. And it just look, it's just magnificent when you're looking up at the ceilings everywhere. There's the acorn statue. And a nice shot off of the roof, looking out over Rome. Another shot from the bottom of the uh, spiral staircase. There's a little courtyard in the middle. When you're going through the museums, you're walking around this courtyard, some more of the spectacular sculptures and artwork. So, Dawn, in Rome, do they drive on the same side of the street as the United States? Uh, no, I think, oh, I can't remember now. I think they drive, yeah, they drive opposite. Okay. I remember trying to be really careful. Um, so yeah, now I'm trying to think because I, I know the, um, I stayed really close to the Vatican, but I think that was a one-way street. So now I'm trying to think. Um, when, I, when I, this is D, when I drove in, yeah. in Rome, it was the same side as the United States. But oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know if that changed or not. Well, that might be it. That might be why I'm still alive. <laughs> I remember being in London and almost getting, you know, nailed by a car because, you know, it's really dangerous when you look the wrong way. Right. Absolutely. I hated driving in London. Oh, yeah, I would definitely not. I would rent <laughs> or, you know, pay someone to <laughs> to move me along. So when you enter the Vatican museums, there is the Pinacoteca museum it's one of the first museums when you enter in this um in the museums and this is a painting gallery i'm going to show you a little video about what's in here there's some very famous paintings uh from um perugino Raphael, caravaggio or some of them so we're going to take a look at this what's in this room
Yeah, so the paintings in the gallery are from um, the Middle Ages through the 1800s. And if we go take a look at, there's two paintings I want to bring your attention to. And one of them here is, um, let me move to the next room here. All right, it's uh, Raphael's The Transfiguration. Very famous painting. We're going to take a look at this one. Let me bring it out here on the slide. This is what the painting looks like. This was painted by Raphael. Uh, this was the last painting he, he did right before he died. It represents the dual nature of Jesus Christ, the human and the divine. It pictures... This is one of the stories from the Gospel of Matthew. So Jesus is in the top. He's got two prophets, Elijah and Moses, on either side of him. And at the bottom of the painting, you see the apostles. And they're, they're accompanying this family who's got a sick son who's sick and he needs to be healed. So they're looking for a cure. Now, the uh, interesting part of this piece is a little bit with the way the color and the composition is in it. So at the top, when it shows the divine, it has very bright colors and very peaceful looking. And the bottom part of the painting is dark, represents Earth's life. You know, the humans are carrying, you know, desperate, uh, <laughs> a desperate living. So you see those two contrasts in uh, this painting. Uh, it's pretty well balanced. You've got the apostles over here pointing up towards the divine, towards Christ's uh, direction. And then you've got over on the right side, um, they're also pointing up. And it's like they're trying to summon help for the boy. Now, this painting was originally uh, commissioned to be an altarpiece to a church in France. Uh, the Pope decided, though, to keep it in Rome himself. But later on, it was stolen by one, no one. Uh, you're going to not gonna believe who stole this. Napoleon stole this painting. It got moved to France, but it was later returned to the Vatican, um, to the gallery here. So this is the painting that got stolen. So that's the Transfiguration, Raphael. Another famous painting to talk about when we go into the rooms here um, is St. Jerome in the Wilderness. This is Leonardo da Vinci. It's in, um, let me get over here. I think it's in room nine. So you can just see where what it looks like. Where's my trying to get out of this one section here? There we go. <clears throat> Just to show you where it is, right here, sitting here on the wall. This is Saint Jerome. This is what the painting looks like. So this is St. Jerome in the Wilderness, painted around 1480. It's an unfinished painting by Leonardo. Uh, it's the only painting he has in Rome in, in, at the Vatican. Um, this was done on a wooden panel. And for some reason, they're not too sure, after Leonardo's death, this was cut into five pieces. Uh, they're not too sure why that happened. And then it got restored. You can see over here, you can see a little bit of a line right here. Just a very faint where the rest, some of the restoration was. So this shows St. Jerome. He's at a very advanced age. Because, you know, Leonardo was very good at uh, drawing and painting anatomy. So you can see the neck, all the veins and, every, you know, the tendons in the neck. He was really good at doing those type of drawings. So St. Jerome, he's in, his, he's in his retreat in this, um, the Syrian desert. He lived as his life as a hermit. 
It shows him kneeling down. He's gazing towards a crucifix, which you can kind of see a shadow of it over here. Um, he's and he's his right hand. He's holding a rock, and one of the uh, what he had been known to do is beat his chest in penance. So he was taking that rock and just slamming it against his chest. So the rock's over here. At his feet, there's an, a lion. And that's his loyal companion because the story goes that he extracted a thorn out of the lion's paw. So you've got the lion, the stone, and the cardinal's hat, which you can kind of, it's over in this area. It looks like you can see something you know, with the crucifix and everything. Um, these are all the uh, traditional attributes of St. Jerome. So this is the uh, famous painting that's also in that gallery. This is painting number eight. It's in room eight. nine. Nine. The other one was eight. Yeah, right. Roommates, the transfiguration. This one's in nine. And I'm going to give you the link to this website for the Vatican so you can go and take a look at all the, the different galleries and everything. Uh, they have a nice website. They've done a nice job with uh, categorizing everything. All right. Another famous place to go to are the Raphael rooms. Let's go back over here. I'll play a little. Um, video here of the Raphael rooms. These, of course, are the rooms that Pope Julius II requested. Raphael was young at that time. Um, he had him come in here to um, redo. These were the Pope's rooms uh, to redo them. Um, ironically, Raphael's mentor and teacher had done all the frescoes in some of these rooms, and he had to paint over his mentor's artwork. Uh, but he uh, came, he worked on these four rooms. So I'm going to play this little, little video for you to take a look at these rooms.
Yeah, so these rooms, again, these were supposed to be the Pope's rooms. Um, when uh, Pope Julius died, there were only two of the rooms had been done at that point. And, uh, and Raphael himself died when the fourth room was being painted and his students had to take, um, finish that room. So, uh, but Pope Leo X was after Pope Julius II and he continued all the restoration work that was going on. So he didn't stop any of the uh, progress that was going on here. So you've got four rooms, the room of Constantine, the room of Heliodorus, the room of Segnatura and the fire in the Borgo. All right, so let's, uh, I'm just gonna click on the room of Constantine so you can see what this looks like. So in this room, you've got several different pieces that are in this one. This is Constantine. Um, you've got the vision of the cross. Show you what this looks like. Now this piece of work, uh, this one shows, um, yeah, this is the vision of cross. This is the battle that went on between, um, uh, what is it? Sorry about that. I just, I just lost my place. This is the battle of Constantine against Maxentius. You can see the cross up here in the sky over the battlefield. This is the baptism of Constantine. So he's kneeling before the Pope. Oh, the donation of Rome. This shows Const Constantine going before Sylvester and he's offering him the city of Rome. They say the Raphael rooms, this is one of the greatest sequence of um, frescoes depicting a lot of historical uh, times during the Renaissance. So you can see all of these different ones. So let's take a look at this battle. Triumph of Christian religion. And one thing that's nice here is we can take a little tour too inside these rooms when we, uh, once we take a look at each of them. This is the room of Heliodorus. Now this room, you're gonna see this is the mass of Balsina. Just depicting a mass. This is the liberation of St. Peter. You've got the apostles. The Prince of the Apostles. He's the first Pope. He's being saved from prison by an angel. It's kind of a dark painting. Uh, this really just shows a lot of contrast between dark and light. It makes it a very, very dramatic fresco because of the way the colors are. And this is Leo the Great, his encounter with Attila. This is St. Peter and St. Paul flying over here. They're armed with swords. This was completed after the death of Julius II. And this is the expulsion of Heliodorus from the temple. Um, he was uh, attempting to steal a treasure that was being preserved in the temple. And he was being banished from this horseman and two youths. They were sent directly from God to ban him. And 
And then a little picture of the ceiling. You get some of the painting. That's the thing at the Vatican. Everything from the ceiling to the floor is painted. <clears throat> the room of uh, Signatura, this one is the room of signatures. This really was the room where um, a lot of uh, papal documents would have been signed. This was the first room that was painted by Raphael. This is where he started. And then we have the School of Athens. This is a very famous painting that's in the, um, the, the signature room here. We're going to talk about that in a second. We're going to come back to that one. But that has a whole story right there. And there's a picture of the ceiling here. It's just beautiful. <clears throat> so all of these, uh, everything in this room, this one here, the Signatura room, is um, it has the most famous frescoes in here. Um, the themes in this room are focused on the concepts of truth, good, and beauty. The first theme is the, disp the disputation of the most holy sacrament. That's this one. And this is opposite of the School of Athens. And then we have the School of Athens. And this portrays, of course, you have Plato and Aristotle. So you've got the battle between the idealist and the realist on both sides. Plato and Aristotle. Yeah, Plato and Aristotle. And then another famous one, of course, the ceiling. This one's kind of interesting here on the ceiling. <clears throat> and then we have Parnassus. This theme here depicts Apollo and, and the muses on the Mount of Parnassus. He's playing his lyre right here. And he's surrounded by ancient and modern poets. Homer, Dante, and Sappos is on here, is in here. Oh, is the lyre like a violin? You know, it's um, it has different... Um, versions of it. A, little, a lot of times it looks like a little harp that you would hold in your hand and strum. But here it looks like it's in the form of a like an early violin. Yeah. Yeah, it does look like a violin. It's, yeah. It's different shapes. Different shapes. I think they were, I think dep uh, depends on what part of the world you were in. The, those lyres were, they, they were a very, very ancient um, music instrument going back thousands of years. But it, it, I think it's been in many different forms depending on the uh, the culture. All right, and then we have, let's go ahead and take a look at another. Um, oh, Mary, you have a question? Yes, do we know how long it took like Raphael to do these frescoes? About 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, all together, yeah. And what about Michelangelo? How about how long for him? Uh, that was about four years. Really? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So let me see. I'm look, look I'm at my notes here. So the um, Sistine Chapel was done between 1508 and 1512. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And, and there's and we're going to talk about Sistine Chapel in a second too. There was a lot of work done there too. All right, and now, um, and then the last one, the Room of the Fire in the Borgo. This place, um, let me find my notes, sorry about that. <laughs> We've got the crowning of Charlemagne. You can see all the different popes that were there too. 
Now, this, this, this one's probably the most dramatic. This is the fire in the Borgo. And this, um, this painting, there was a fire uh, next to the Vatican. This was in um, during Pope Leo III and Pope Leo IV around their time. This fire happened. It's a very dramatic painting. You've got uh, the fire going on. They're trying to extinguish the fire. There's babies being thrown over the wall and it's, it's a very dramatic painting. And the, uh, the, of course the theme is that the Pope took, put out the fire. Pope Leo the fourth, he put it out with his blessing. So let's take a little look in the, what these rooms look like. We've got a little virtual tour so you can take a look at them. So you can scan around. I'm just moving my mouse and looking around here. So you can see what they really look like on the wall. See, some of them are painted around windows and doors. This is the crowning of Charlemagne. We we're just talking about it. Here's the fire of Borgo. Very dramatic painting. You've got, uh, you know, this woman's throwing her baby over the wall or handing it over. This guy's jumping over. You can see all the drama of people trying to save people from the fire. And of course, the ceilings, just beautiful, the work that's in here. So yeah, definitely take some time. Uh, if you want to, uh, yeah, like I will give you this link. You can roam from one room to the next. You just click on the little, trans. there's a translucent arrow. If you click on it, it takes you to the next room. So you can just go from one room to the next. Oh yeah, here's the one. Let's talk about this one, the School of Athens. This painting, <clears throat> this has, um, this is in the first room that Raphael painted, okay? And it was supposed to be the, a library or study for the Pope. So of course you wanna have paintings of thinkers. So we have uh, Plato on one side, Aristotle on the other. Now, the interesting thing about this painting though, the face of Plato, is really the face of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a, a mentor to Raphael, probably about 30 years older than Raphael. Uh, well, actually, probably about 40 years older than Raphael. Uh, but he, uh, he worked with um, da Vinci in Florence before he came to uh, Rome to work in the Vatican. So he really loved um, da Vinci. He, uh, he took the... You know, you know, he also knew um, Michelangelo also. So he, when you look at Raphael's paintings, you see a little bit of the subtleness, the softness of da de Vinci in his painting and the muscular um, strength that Michelangelo has. So you'll see a mixture of that in Raphael's paintings because he was influenced by both men. So uh, the idea of this painting is it's balanced. You've got all the idealist on the left side. These are supposed to be all different types of, um, you know, poets and, you know, all different thinkers of the time on both sides of the, the painting. Over here in the corner, this is supposed to be a self-portrait of Raphael. And he's looking out at the, to the viewer, whoever's looking at the painting, you, his eyes are looking right at you. And the funny thing about this painting is in the front, this is supposed to be um, uh, Heraclitus. Heraclitus, he was a um, Greek philosopher. He was a much, very, very much a hermit. His uh, famous uh, saying was, you cannot step into the same river. 
So he, his view was, you know, change is not just a part of life. It's life itself. That's what his philosophy was. So he was a bit of a brooder. And when this painting was originally done, this part was not here, right? They had, he didn't put the philosopher in. But when the Sistine Chapel opened up the first, when Michelangelo finished the first section and they opened up for the public, you know, Michelangelo got all this attention and everything. And, you know, they didn't, know, they didn't like each other, Michelangelo and Raphael. They kind of feuded a little bit. So I guess he didn't like all the attention Michelangelo was getting. And then all of a sudden this showed up. This is the face of Michelangelo. It's supposed to be the philosopher, but he painted the face of Michelangelo here as the brooder. So it, it's kind of a little, I don't know, <laughs> a little painting fight they had, I guess. <laughs> but it's kind of funny how this got painted after that happened. So it's kind of an interesting story with this painting. So that's the School of Athens, very famous painting and um, we go here um, looking at the school here we go photo bombing in the 16th century style there's the a little close-up of Raphael's self-portrait looking out at the viewer so kind of interesting that he had not only he put a self-portrait in he had uh, the face of Leonardo da Vinci in the painting, and he had Michelangelo. So it's like all three of them were uh, very involved in each other's lives. Uh, da Vinci was older. He didn't come to Rome um, at the time when Michelangelo, Michelangelo and Raphael were painting at the Vatican at the same time. So they were in the same area. They definitely knew of each other. Um, Raphael was very popular. He had a school of art. In fact, when he died, that fourth room um, was finished by Raphael's students. And he, he was very popular. Everyone, everyone liked him in the area in Rome. Um, he had quite a name for himself. And I think there was some animosity between him and, um, and Michelangelo. So let's talk about the Sistine Chapel. This is another, uh, this is the, well, if you go to the Vatican, the end of the tour, is at the uh, Sistine Chapel. I'm going to show you a little little video about it. Beautiful, huh? It's so it's, it's so it's beautiful, but why are always people are always naked though? But you know, 
that's a good point. Actually, that's part of the story. Let's let's take a little virtual tour here and come into the um, Sistine Chapel. You come in here, you can get a nice view of, of course, the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened in 15, um, I want to say 1506. This used to be just like a starry stars. That That's what was painted on the ceiling, a bunch of stars. And then the a big crack developed in the ceiling. They went How to fix the ceiling. The yeah, they went to yeah they went to fix the ceiling, and the fresco got ruined that was on the ceiling. So they called in Michelangelo. He was already in another. He was he had left Rome at this point, and they called him back to come. He thought he was going to come back to work on the tomb for the Pope. And then when he got here, he realized he was going to be hanging from a ceiling <laughs> for four years. So he didn't like that too much. So the uh, Sistine Chapel, 1508 to 1512, is when he worked on it. I'm going to go in a little bit more. And to give you a little bit of an idea of the layout, this is what it looks like on the ceiling. And this tells the Old Testament. This tells the creation of uh, man, the fall of man, promise of salvation. It starts over here. God div divides the light from the darkness. Then he creates the sun and the planets. Then he divides the water from the earth. Then God creates Adam. That's towards the center of the uh, ceiling. Then he creates Eve. And then Adam and Eve are tempted. And they're sent from Eden. And then Noah and his family make a sacrifice after the flood. And then there's the great flood. And then Noah's drunk and disgraced. I'm not too sure what that was. Did anybody remember that part of the story? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that was about. Now, when he painted this, he didn't start at creation, though. But he started on the other end, on the Noah end. Because Michelangelo wasn't sure how he was going to draw God. So he figured by, by the time he, he started on the other end and got to the point where he had to draw God, that he would have a pretty good idea of what he was going to draw. So that's how he drew this. And the way that he drew God was very muscular right? Yes. Uh, in the painting. And that was the first time God was really depicted that way. Uh, here shows... Um, one of the, the panels here, there's God. So they showed him very muscular. This is the creation of Adam. And but once he started painting, you know, once people saw this, this became more the norm of painting God in this way, in this very, very muscular human way. This was the, my, Michelangelo was the first one really to paint him in a human way. Oh, and it just really? kind of took off. Here's Eve. Yeah, the, the, with the muscles in the... In the yeah, the yeah, after that, thing. yeah. Uh, uh, before that, you know, they were, they would, uh, God was drawn in paintings in just in different ways, not really in human form, but this, Michelangelo really brought out the idea of it being more of a human form. Mm -hmm. And very buff. <laughs> very. Okay, here we are. This is the Garden of Eden. And that's the last the judgment. Women, the men, the women looked manly too. Michelangelo, he he was very his drawings were always very muscular, and he always a lot of poses. This um, the ceiling here has three hundred and something uh, human figures on it. So uh, you know he was very good at drawing uh, the human pose. Let's go ahead and go back into the Sistine Chapel so you can see it a little bit more. So now that we know the layout, we can take a look up here at the ceiling. Other painters painted the sides, the walls. So now you can see here it is the God creating Adam, creating Eve. So you can see the whole story being told here. It's really quite a feat. 
Now, when he left after doing the Sistine Chapel, he got called back 25 years later. And that was to paint this painting, The Last Judgment. This is behind the altar. Um, he was a bit older, too, at this point. Um, yeah, 25 years later, came back to paint this. This has another 300 and something figures on it. This is a huge painting. This one shows the second coming of Christ and God's judge, final judgment over humanity. Okay, so you can see there's 300 figures here. And what it is, is God's doing his judgment. There's the virgin sitting next to him. And this is supposed to be a self-portrait of um, Michelangelo right here. This is, um, this is the skin of uh, St. Bartholomew because he got, he got skinned live, right? So this is his skin. So what you'll see is the judgments being passed on. It kind of goes in a circle. Everyone's coming down. The people that are going to hell end up in this boat, and then they get pushed off the boat to hell. The angels are playing the trumpets to raise the dead, the people that are going to go to heaven. So here they are grabbing their bodies and rising up. And they're going to heaven. So this whole thing works in a circle. That's the meaning behind it. Now, a lot of new, new, <laughs> nudes here. <laughs> Michelangelo loved the nudes. After Mike, uh, Michelangelo died, they actually painted clothes on all these figures. Because the church had gotten a little conservative after around that time. And they felt like it was too much nudity. So they painted robes on everything. But then as times changed later on, luckily it wasn't, you know, I guess they didn't paint it too thick, but they were able to take the robes off and restore it back to its original um, uh, place. So that's the story of this, The Last Judgment. And just to give you some information, Michelangelo, he died in 1564. He lived to be 89 years old. He was in his 60s when he did this painting here. Raphael, he died in 1520. He, only, he was only 37 years old when he died. And uh, Leonardo da Vinci, he uh, died in 1519 at the age of 67. So to give you an idea of these three major painters from the Renaissance era, how they lived. Anyone have any questions here? All right. So let's take a look. Let me check out the uh, slide. So this is again, The Last Judgment. And that's the end of our tour. Anyone have any uh, comments or questions that you have? It was beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, I did. A place I'll never get to go to. So it was, thank you. It was, it was really nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's just thank so you so much. You opened up the world for us. Thank oh, you. Thank You're you. welcome. It's my pleasure. I enjoy it very much. Yeah, I'm going to send you the uh, link to the Vatican site so you can go and just, you know, wander around and take a look at all these work of arts, watch the videos and enjoy uh, looking at more of the Vatican. So okay. I'm going to. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. I'm going to. I want to thank you for coming today. Uh, we have uh, virtual visits, um, how to do virtual tours with museums that I have a class that comes up every now and then on the schedule. We have the Great Arctic Adventure. If you'd like to learn more about the Northwest Territories and the Arctic Circle in Canada, that's a um, trip I took there. We have a virtual tour of San Francisco. And we have Painted Ladies, a virtual tour of the Victorians of San Francisco that you can check out if you're interested in some architecture. Uh, you'll get uh, 
feedback uh, email at the end of this class with a feedback form. Go ahead and fill out the feedback form if you have any class ideas that you'd be interested in um, learning more about. You can go ahead and put those ideas in the feedback. I'm looking for people interested in art and music if you'd like to get involved in some projects here at Get Set Up. Just put in the feedback form that you'd like me to contact you, and I will definitely contact you about a project you might want to do if you have a particular okay. interest. Uh, again, we do have, we, you know, if you're interested in doing some type of interest group, just let us know in the feedback form. And uh, if you have, I would like to know more about how to use our website, registering for classes and learning about the new TV feature and all types of new things that are on the website. Uh, go to Marv's class, Tips and Tricks to Navigating Get Setup's New Look. You can learn all about the new website that we have here. And I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, We'll see you next time in whatever adventure we end up doing. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Care. All right, everyone. Thank you. Hey, guys, have a good night. Take care. Thank you. Great seeing you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.